Hello everybody and welcome to the Boxing Locker. I am Matt Goddard, former professional boxing, our boxing coach. And today, this one is for all of those uh, coaches, aspiring coaches, Instagram coaches, everybody out there. I'm going to take you through a few of my top tips for uh, good pad work, for making your pad work high quality so you get the most out of it, so it's as realistic as possible and so it's as valuable as possible to your clients, fighters, whoever it is you're working with. Okay, so... Primarily, the main focus here is that we have to understand when we're doing pads, it needs to be safe and realistic, okay? Safe and realistic, those are the two things, right? So, I'm going to tailor, tip number one, tailor the speed of what I'm doing to the level that my fighter is at now, or my, my client is at. So, when I'm holding the pads, okay, if I've got a beginner who's never done something before, if I go and go too fast with my punches that counter or too fast with my combinations. What happens is it gets scrappy, it gets inaccurate, it becomes um, wild and lazy. And you see these kind of pad videos all the time where people are throwing 20 punch combinations. They're all out of position. Half of the hooks are out here. They're all over the place. It looks ridiculous and there's no value to it whatsoever. You're giving those people a false sense of confidence that they don't deserve, haven't earned, and they will get them hurt if they try and utilize their boxing anywhere outside of that pad work scenario, okay? Now, I know some people are doing this just for fitness, which is fine, and actually I advocate boxing for fitness and pad work for fitness. I do it with loads of clients. That doesn't mean you have to do it badly. You wouldn't go to a driving range to teach someone to play golf and go, oh, you're never gonna be a golfer, so it doesn't really matter where you hit the ball. Do you know what I mean? The, that analogy summarizes how you should be with the pads. You want it to be as accurate, as realistic, and as professional as possible, okay? So, the pace, okay? Pace is important. So if I'm going to, uh, say, a one-two, a jab, cross, jab, cross, right? I'm keeping that pace, jab, cross. Then I'm gonna throw a counter. Now. If you go too fast for your, for your client, your fighter, your, whoever you're working with, if you go too fast on those counters, what happens is naturally you, as the coach, avoid their face because you don't want to hit them in the head. And then you end up punching all over the place, right? So they're not actually evading the shots. So it's far better for me to go one, two, and throw the jab dead straight in line with my own chin, straight out at them for all of my punches, so that they actually have to evade the shots, okay? They actually have to evade them. They're not gonna panic. The punch is coming at them slowly. I give them plenty of time to react and then perhaps throw some counters, whatever we've worked out, whatever we're planning, however we're structuring the pad work, okay? So that's tip number one, pace. Segways us nicely into tip number two, which is accuracy of what you're doing, okay? So if I am throwing punches at my, at my client or fighter, I'm aiming on that same line in front of me. So all of my shots are aimed an accurate level, okay? What I don't want to be doing is throwing hooks over the top of their head so they only have to do this. Completely unrealistic waste of time. I see professional coaches doing that. Then they wonder why when their fighters get in the ring and they're only dipping here, they're still getting clipped with hooks, okay? Get used to that, bend at the waist, soft knees, changing head height enough that a punch will actually go over the top. Look, if my opponent throws a shot, they're aiming at my chin nine times out of 10. I have to make sure my head dips low enough get under that and then I come round and come up ready to throw my own shots okay so what we're trying to do is simulate that same thing so I throw all of my shots at the same target the same height trying to actually hit them in the face now I don't mean you're gonna go wah, 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 and start beating them around the head what I mean is take your time do it slowly as I said with that pace thing give them a chance to get used to real punches coming towards them, defending in a manner that is realistic and accurate to what they'll be defending with when they actually are confronted with a real combat scenario, such as tech sparring, sparring, light sparring, body sparring, mitt work, or competing, or they get in a fight. Now, um, defending accurately, segues us nice, sorry, I forgot where I was there. Uh, segues us nicely onto the next topic, the third thing, and that is where you hold your hands, okay? So if I'm holding the pads and I'm out here, what is that simulating, right? Everything I'm trying to do is keep within the framework of my own body, okay? So I'm holding pads, everything is here, okay? See how all of the punches are finishing on that center line? I don't want to be finishing a hook over here or over here. I want everything down that middle. So I'm jab, cross, hook, cross, hook, cross, jab, hook, uppercut, uppercut, 
Body shots, I keep it nice and tight in here, in here, here and here, here and here. So I'm actually working to head height, body height on that center line, having those singular targets so that all of their punches in the combination are aimed at the same point as opposed to people punching like this on the pads where you get nothing out of it. The other thing you can do with that is same pad work, okay? So I'm here, I go double jab, cross, double jab, cross, come through with a hook. One, one, two, three, bop, 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 boom. There we go, we've got three punches, okay? That's down to you, your proficiency, the, the proficiency of your client. But again, it's all about keeping those punches within the same framework. We want to be doing as little work as possible. However, again, segueing on to the next point, there has to be resistance to the punch. If I let them hit my pads and I'm knocking my arms all over the place, not only will that give them a false sense of power and, and an inaccuracy of technique, it will also hurt you, okay? You're gonna end up with sore elbows, shoulders, wrists, all of that stuff, and it's really important that we avoid that as much as possible, okay? So when I'm in here, a slight amount of resistance all the time, keeping them shots resisted, but aiming at the same target. So if I'm the boxer and I'm throwing my shots, okay? If I get to this point and there's no resistance and my arm extends over the top, I'm getting a false understanding of range. Or if I get to here and my shot gets hit, again, false understanding of range. I'm not learning to use that extension to land my shots out there and to understand what I'm throwing and when, where my body needs to be, all of those factors. So I'm trying to get them to land almost fully extended with them straight shots, with my hooks and uppercuts. I've got range in mind, okay? So if, I, if I'm here as the boxer and my coach is right there, I'm here for the shots in close and then I'm getting them to move out laterally. If we're nice and long and extended, I'm back here, stretching them out, making them keep them nice and long, and then I'm moving around using their footwork, okay? So that's another factor, footwork, okay? Oh, these segues are smooth, man. So footwork, right? We don't wanna be static all the time. Now, I understand there is a place for static drills. However, even if I'm doing the work I'm doing on the spot, there can be little bits of footwork. You don't wanna be completely still. Little perpetual movements all the time, so you're never still. If at any point in a boxing ring, you plant your feet and stand completely still, chances are you're gonna get caught out. You're gonna get picked off because you can't switch off in that way. The more you move, even if I'm not going anywhere, my feet, you can't see, but my feet right now are lifting up and down. Let me go back to show you exactly what I mean. So I'm here and my feet are moving a little bit all the time, even on the spot. What that does is it means I'm constantly aware, alert and ready. So if I have to move, I can. If I plant my feet and sit my weight into the ground, there's nothing with planted feet, but even in planted feet, I can still move. Look, if I plant my feet and stand still and wait, I'm gonna get caught out, okay? You don't have the same reaction time, the speed of thought process to do what you need to do. So we're trying to keep that perpetual movement always moving, all right? My job as the coach is to maintain that movement for them. So I'm moving around all the time. I work, keeping them out nice and long, touching out with my punches, or even in close, I'm stepping around them, I'm trying to create little angles, present them with new targets and um, a new kind of look to force them to move. I don't want to be in a position where they can just throw punches all the time. Sometimes I want to be coming at them, moving my head so they get used to seeing that. Sometimes I want to be just touching that jab out there so they get used to the range and they kind of know where they are and what they're moving away from. So there's lots of factors in it. So there we have it, guys. Those are my top tips. There's a plethora, a whole ton of more things that I could talk about. But those are my top tips for those of you who want to take the pads for your friends, family, uh, clients, fighters that you know, whatever. Um, the more accurate and realistic you can make it, the better. The more they will get out of it, the more you will get out of it, and the better you will be as a pad man, mitt man, coach, whatever you want to think of it as. Always, always, always remember that speed does not equate to quality, okay? Quality is quality, not speed. You can go in as fast as you want, but if you've got no defensive responsibility, your balance is off, your position is incorrect, they're missing you with the punches rather than you missing, um, making their punches miss. There's no counters, the jab's rubbish, the range is wrong. All that's gonna happen when you get into a boxing scenario is you will apply those things and you will get sparked out and it will reflect poorly on you as the coach and on them as the fighter. So. Slow and steady wins the race. Keep it correct, keep it accurate. Take your time to be technically as perfect as possible and then introduce speed um, progressively as they get more competent and more confident. As always, thank you for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts, any questions on coaching, any questions on 
uh, anything boxing related or any ideas for other videos that you would like to see, let me know them as always. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff and have a wicked day, everybody.